time now for the morning rush. Let's start things with Kristen Curry. Good morning. We'll start the day with plenty of sunshine, but getting into the afternoon, we have some moisture out there, and with the help of daytime heating, we have spotty to scattered storms possible over the northern mountains and the eastern plains. Coverage still pretty light, but some of these storms could be strong to severe. We have a better chance of that as we get into tomorrow. Going to be looking at a lot more in the way of storm coverage continuing into Wednesday. Adam? New this morning in the wake of the London attacks, President Trump says he will do whatever is necessary to stop the threat of terrorism from spreading to America. The president made those comments Sunday during a fundraiser for Ford's Theater in Washington, D.C. The president also tweeted out over the weekend that the U.S. needs a, quote, travel ban to keep our country safe. The Department of Homeland Security says there is no credible threat to the U.S. at this time. And breaking news this morning, new tweets out by the president about an hour and a half ago about what he is now calling a travel ban. The president is now criticizing his own Justice Department for how it's defending the executive order. The president says Justice Department attorneys are asking the Supreme Court to review a, quote, watered-down, politically correct version. He also took a jab at the court, saying they're slow and political. A concert raising money for the victims of last month's suicide bombing in Manchester, England, is trending on social media this morning. Pop star Ariana Grande became visibly emotional after performing a song with a children's chorus. The deadly bombing in May took place after one of her concerts. Last night's event also featured Katy Perry, Justin Bieber, and Coldplay. On to other news this morning. 14 protesters in Portland are waking up behind bars after a series of rallies that happened after a day of Trump supporters and critics held opposing rallies in downtown Portland on Sunday. Sunday. Pro Trump protesters called for free speech. Critics of the president say they want more transparency from the White House amid investigations of possible ties between the Trump administration and Russia. We did some checking this morning and found that the suspect who police say stabbed another man remains locked up. Sean McNair was arrested on Saturday. Police say they've been looking for him since early May. That's when he's accused of stabbing his girlfriend's neighbor at her apartment complex in the metro. According to the DA's office, McNair has an extensive criminal history, including a felony in Oklahoma. Happening today, we could learn more about a murder investigation in Grants. Police say it happened on Friday. When officers arrived on scene, they say a man with a rifle confronted them. They say that man was tased and taken into custody. Inside, officers say they found the homeowner already dead. Names have not been released for the victim or man arrested. Their relationship not known at this time. Police would only say the victim is a man in his late 40s. And new this morning, firefighters are investigating a mobile home fire that forced the closure of a residential street late last night. The Bernalillo County Fire Department says it was called out to the 3000 block of San Ignacio near Bridge and Old Coors. The home unoccupied at the time. Nobody was injured. San Ignacio was closed between Foothill and Juanita southwest but that has since been reopened this well, morning one new mexico home. man I'm will likely pick up the hammer again to continue home tackling home homelessness in his community in a tiny home way home jim burleson plans on building six home homes within the next two years the tenants will have to sign a lease but they will be able to live in the homes for free and build a good rental uh, history they'll also when they're ready to move out that is so far the first home he's building is only 96 square feet Happening now, Carson National Forest crews have been busy trying to battle a wildfire burning in northern New Mexico. It started Saturday about 19 miles north of El Rito. Crews say due to the steep and rocky terrain, fire managers are left monitoring the fire. They tell us smoke may be visible from communities around the area. Authorities believe the fire was sparked by lightning, and that's something we'll be watching for today too out east as we have more of those storm chances along and east of the central mountains. Albuquerque, no storms today, but metro threat index added too because of the warm temperatures climbing back to the 90s this afternoon underneath that mostly sunny sky. Crystal? We could learn later today if the FAA will investigate a hard landing that caused a scare by Double Eagle Airport. BCSO says around 10 o'clock Sunday morning, a single engine fixed wing plane went down about 10 miles southwest of the airport on the Mesa. State police are now investigating this. We're told the pilot was alone and was not injured. State police say a piece of equipment went out and the pilot had to make that hard landing. Sarah. A Rio Rancho woman's children's book is for sale this morning on Amazon. Little Bite Big Problem is about Sarah Schlichty Sanchez's own personal struggle with Lyme disease. Through fictional characters, Sarah says it will provide hope to families and raise awareness about the devastating disease. For more information, visit KRQE.com. Chris. Happening tomorrow, Eddy County taxpayers will learn if they will have to fork over money to help fix the Carlsbad well. That's according to the Carlsbad Current Argus. It reports that on Tuesday, Eddy County officials will vote whether to pull $125,000 from the county's general fund. 
and put it toward a study on the former brine well. It's feared the well will collapse in the next few years. The article reports that the collapse could create more than $1 billion in damages. Kristen. Time to get a check on that Monday morning commute. Nothing major out there and moving pretty good on both interstates. Core southbound as you approach Alameda is slow per normal for this time of morning, but we'll keep you updated if anything pops up. On to new research this morning that finds women who breastfeed for two months or longer after a cesarean birth report three times less chronic pain at the surgical site than women who stop breastfeeding early. Pain lasting more than three months affects one in five women who have C-sections. On to news happening today, APD will host Coffee with a Cop in Northwest Albuquerque. Officers will be on hand to take your questions, listen to concerns. The event is open to the public. Kids are also invited to join the conversation. It's all taking place at the Starbucks in Alameda, just northwest of Corellis Road. It starts at 8 o'clock this morning in about an hour. It lasts until 10 o'clock. All right, time now for the five facts. Start with number five, a call for artists this morning. The Bernalillo County Arts Board is looking for proposals for a sculpture at the new animal shelter being built near 2nd and Rio Bravo. The facility will house dogs, cats, even livestock. Find details on our KRQ News app. Number four, in just two days, the Española School Board is scheduled to hold a redo meeting after members reported themselves to the AG's office for violating New Mexico's Open Meetings Act. On Thursday, the board members held an executive meeting interviewing superintendent candidates. One candidate was midway through an interview when the school board president realized that the meeting was not posted 72 hours in advance. The school board president says new questions will be asked at Wednesday's meeting. At number three, warm today with temperatures in the 90s, body to scattered storms favoring the northern mountains and areas along and east of the central mountains. That goes for today and tomorrow. Wednesday, looking at the possibility of isolated storms here in the metro with temperatures in the upper 80s. On to number two now, the Albuquerque City Council is expected to decide tonight whether to put a two cent per gallon gas tax on the ballot. The voters, if voters uh, pass it, the money collected would be used for road improvements. Councilors are also expected to discuss the mayor's revised budget. This after Mayor Richard Berry vetoed the budget passed by City Council last week. They could vote on the new revised version within a few weeks. And number one, London Bridge back open this morning, just two days after a deadly terror attack. We could learn today who the three attackers are. Seven people were killed, 48 others were injured when three men drove through a crowd of pedestrians on London Bridge, crashed the vehicle, and randomly stabbed people in a marketplace. All of the attackers were eventually killed by police minutes after they arrived on scene. Also this morning, 11 more people are behind bars after authorities conducted raids in a neighborhood east of the city. ISIS has since claimed responsibility for that terror attack.